Glory to Jesus Christ. My friends, it's the same old story. Have you ever used that phrase, the same old story? I know that I have. It's one of those wonderful phrases we have in the English language that ends up saying perhaps more than it seems to say. But in reality, the same old story. Think of it. None of those words by themselves necessarily indicate anything at all bad. The same. If something is the same, and it was good to begin with, then that which is the same is also good. Now the converse is true also, so it depends on where you're starting from. Something's old. There's nothing necessarily wrong with being old, something being old. Again, depending on what you're dealing with. And a story, well, it's just something that's told and retold, words that express something that is worth passing on. So really, we shouldn't be afraid of the same old story. In fact, as Christians, we welcome it. Through the course of the year, during the Divine Liturgy, we hear the same old story. It's old, yes, but it is also ever new. For it once again lives by the life-giving voice of the Church, and it comes to meet us wherever we may be as we walk the path of grace and faith. And we have a chance especially to notice this retelling of the same old story when we hear the Gospel this week. For we hear of our Lord casting out the legion of demons from the Gerasene demoniac. And the demons flee into a herd of swine, and the herd of swine promptly takes off running and throws themselves into the sea and drown. And if you're thinking that we've already heard this story and not too long ago, well, you're right. It's difficult to forget a gospel reading which includes a herd of pigs hurling themselves into the sea. At least it is for me to forget that. But 18 weeks ago, already, 18 weeks ago, on the fifth Sunday after Pentecost, St. Matthew related this episode to us in his Gospel. And today, St. Luke also tells us of this exorcism. It's the same old story, and yet, like I said, it's ever new, too. For we have once again the opportunity to learn and to take to mind and to heart the lesson and the fruit of this gospel. Now the scene should still be familiar to us. Our Lord arrives by boat in the land of the Gerasons and encounters a man possessed by devils. He's wearing no clothing, living among the tombs. And the devils through this man cry out in fear before the Lord. And the Lord, having mercy on the possessed man, casts the demons out of him and into a nearby herd of swine which then runs violently down into the water and drowns. Now, we might make note here of a couple particulars which St. Luke relates to us and which might speak to us in a special way today. Like I said, the same old story, but ever new. The first particular that St. Luke points out is that when news had been brought into the nearby town of what had happened, the people, as he says, went out to see what was done. And they came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at his feet, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Did you notice that? They found the man out of whom the devils were departed, and they found him clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. See, this is the very hallmark of a people who are accustomed to being oppressed by the devils. They become afraid at the sight of a person who is clothed and in his right mind. And it's not so different today, is it? For all the talk of daring and revolution and counterculture, what is truly daring is to be clothed, 
to be modest both in body and soul. What is truly counter-cultural is to be in your right mind, to use your God-given reason and good sense. In a society where even an entire herd of demon-possessed pigs would rather drown themselves than hang around the general population, simply being clothed and being in your right mind can be a daring and even frightening act of rebellion. Think on that. And I say, let's do it. Let's do exactly that. And that would bring us to the second point that St. Luke makes. See, the man who had been delivered from the demons, and who was now clothed and in his right mind, well, he wanted to stay with our Lord, to follow him. For this man knew what kind of a place he was living in. And having tasted of the goodness of the grace of God, he wanted to leave where he was, and follow the Lord anywhere. But notice, the Lord calls him to a different purpose. The Lord says to him, Return to thy house, and tell how great things God hath done to thee. And the man went through the whole city, publishing how great things Jesus had done to him. And so it is, often, with those who have been delivered, those who have, by the grace of God, undertaken the monumental work of being clothed and being in their right minds. There can be a great desire to leave behind a society which is frightened by spiritual normalcy. Think on that. The society is frightened by grace. A society which, when it had seen the works that the Lord had done in today's gospel, instead of rejoicing in the grace of God, it rather asked him to depart. And one may understandably have a great desire to leave that behind. But more often than not, the Lord says to us, Return to thy house, and tell how great things God hath done to thee. The house, the city, the world may not be interested in hearing it. The great things that God has done to us may only serve to bring about fear among them, and a desire that the Lord depart and yet, the Lord still wishes it to be done. He wishes the news of his grace to be published abroad. And he wishes all of those that who have been clothed and who are in their right mind will tell the great things God hath done for them. And so there it is. Yes, in the end, it may be the same old story, but it is one worth telling to the greater glory of God.